Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is subgame perfect equilibrium. We're going to begin moving away from simultaneous move games and into a world where players take turns moving and can strategize accordingly. And I start covering this in lesson 2.1 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. You can check the video description for more information about that. So the game that we're going to be covering today looks like this. A firm is deciding whether to enter the market, which another firm currently has a monopoly over. If this firm deciding whether to enter does in fact choose to enter, then the monopolist chooses whether to accept this new entrant into the market or declare a price war. Now the firm that's deciding whether to enter only wants to enter if the monopolist won't engage in a price war. If the monopolist engages in a price war, then all of the profits disappear and so entering the market isn't profitable. But this also means that a price war is unprofitable for the monopolist. So the game actually looks like this if we diagram it out. This is what we call a game tree, which is organizing the order of moves. So firm one begins the game by choosing whether to go in or stay out. If firm one stays out, the game is over, and firm two gets to keep its monopoly over the, the market, and it gets a payoff of two, and that's good for firm two. And firm one keeps the amount that it would invest to get into the market, so it's also getting a two in that outcome. Now firm one enters, then firm two has a chance to move, and firm two can either accept firm one's entry into the market or reject that and declare a price war. If firm two declares a price war, then all of the profits disappear, so everyone's getting nothing. And if firm two accepts firm one's entry, firm one is going to be better at producing the good than firm two is. So that means firm one's gonna get more profits. It's gonna get a profit of three, whereas firm two is only gonna get a profit of one. All right? So looking at this game, we might think that there are two equilibria here. We might think that there's an equilibrium where firm one enters the market and firm two accepts firm one's entry. Why does that seem like an equilibrium? Well, imagine that they did play those strategies. Then firm one would get a payoff of three and firm two would get a payoff of one. If firm two switches its strategy and declares war instead, Firm 2 goes from earning 1 to earning 0. So that's not a profitable deviation for Firm 2. Firm 2 wouldn't want to deviate. And if Firm 2 is accepting, if Firm 1 goes out, instead of getting 3 like it is currently, it's only going to get 2. So that's not a profitable deviation for Firm 1. So it would appear that that seems like a really reasonable equilibrium. Likewise, you might think that there's a second equilibrium where Firm 1 stays out and then Firm 2 would declare a price war if it ever had a chance to move. So in this case, Firm 1 wouldn't want to switch because it's currently getting 2, it's keeping its investment for staying out, and if it were to enter, if it were to get into the market, then Firm 2 would declare a price war and Firm 1 would earn nothing. So that's not profitable deviation for Firm 1. Well, what about Firm 2's choice? As it turns out, Firm 2 never has a chance to move here, so Firm 2's choice is irrelevant as long as Firm 1 is staying out. As long as Firm 1 is staying out, then Firm 2 just gets 2, and that's it. And Firm 2's move down here doesn't matter because Firm 2 never actually has a chance to move. So this, you might think, is also a reasonable equilibrium, where Firm 2 declares a price war and Firm 1 stays out. Now this game actually corresponds to something that we've already seen in a simultaneous move game. So this was actually the weak dominance game where there were two equilibria in pure strategies, an up left equilibrium and a down right equilibrium. But this is actually the exact same game as before that we were looking at just a second ago, right? Because we've just replaced the players with firms and firm one's choice is now in and out instead of up and down and firm two's choice is now accept and war instead of left and right. But these two equilibria still correspond to what we were talking about in the weak dominance game, where here we have firm one entering and firm two accepting, and here we have firm one staying out and firm two going to war if it ever had a chance to move. However, this equilibrium is going to be really, really weird if we think about it a little bit harder. So in the context of a simultaneous move game, this is all reasonable. But when we move to this world where players are taking turns moving and Firm 2 is actually responding to Firm 1's action, Firm 2 is never actually going to want to declare war. Let's talk about why. So imagine Firm 1 does move and it chooses to enter the market. Now Firm 2 has a decision to make. It can either accept and get 1 or it can declare a price war and get a 0. Well, what does that mean? That means if Firm 2 ever has a chance to move, it's never in Firm 2's best interest to declare a price war. Firm 2 would always want to accept Firm 1's entry, 
given that Firm 1 has entered the market. It doesn't make sense for Firm 2 to declare war at that point because Firm 2 is not going to profit from war. It's only going to profit if it accepts. So it only makes sense for Firm 2 to accept given Firm 1's move. And so as a result, this equilibrium doesn't make sense because it relies on an inherently incredible threat from Firm 2. In this equilibrium where Firm 1 is staying out and Firm 2 is declaring a price war, Firm 1's decision to stay out is only rational given Firm 2's threat to declare a price war. But Firm 1 should be able to reason that if Firm 1 ever does make a move, it's no longer in Firm 2's best interest to follow through on this threat. This is an incredible threat, which means Firm 2 is going to accept instead. And so that means given that Firm 2 is going to accept, it's no longer sensible for Firm 1 to stay out. Firm 1 should want to switch to going into the market and entering the market and forcing Firm 2 to accept Firm 1's entry. And so Firm 1 can get its best payoff of 3 here. And this equilibrium just doesn't make sense in that context. So this is the idea of subgame perfect equilibrium. It's called subgame, or it has a subgame in its name, because when we're doing this sort of equilibrium, we're making sure that every sort of threat is inherently credible. And the way we do that is by chopping things down into individual subgames. So we think of this move down here from Firm 2 as a subgame, where Firm 2 is deciding whether to accept or declare war. And we're making sure that Firm 2's move here is actually sensible given the fact that it moves in this particular subgame. And that's why we're saying it only makes sense for Firm 2 to accept and doesn't make sense for Firm 2 to declare a price war. And the reason that we call it perfect is that by looking at this subgame individually, we're ensuring that these threats are credible. So that's why we have the name subgame perfect equilibrium. Obviously, it's an equilibrium because everything is ensuring that no one has any sort of incentive to change their moves, but we call it subgame because we're looking for subgames and we call it perfect because it only allows for credible threats. And so when we're studying these sorts of games where players are taking turns moving, we're trying to rule out unsensible equilibria where threats aren't credible. So really, the study of subgame perfect equilibrium is the study of credible threats. And so we're going to be talking a lot about credible threats moving forward, how to make threats credible, when not to believe threats, and so forth. If subgame perfect equilibrium still seems a little bit strange to you, that's fine because we're going to be doing this the entire unit here. So that wraps up this video, and in the next video we will further talk about subgame perfect equilibrium. Um, and in that particular video, we'll talk about backward induction, which is usually the most common way of finding a subgame perfect equilibrium. Join me in that video.